Fede, yeah. Uh, what do we do? <laughs> um, that's a good question, isn't it? It kind of was what I alluded to in the earlier video. It's all very well to say um, all we have to do is find some way to bring about a positive value state and uh, a self-generated one. And um, suddenly uh, we don't have to worry about anything else. But how do we do that? Um, like just establishing that it is possible doesn't quite cut it, does it? Uh, it's like saying, okay, I want to become a Buddhist. Okay, all you have to do is become enlightened. Boom, there, see? Isn't it easy? <laughs> uh, that's how you become a Buddhist. Or, you know, how do I, I don't know, become a anythingist or whatever, you know, how do I, let's say I'm a communist. Well, you just institute world communism and everything's wonderful. <laughs> um, how do you get there? Well, it is, it has been my experience that there is no one way to get there. Um, you mentioned the Stoics. The Stoics have some fairly good um, advice to give in how to get there. Um, but again, it's just advice. It's not an actual prescription for what you have to do. Uh, Seneca, the shortness of human life, says, um, our lives are long enough. Um, it's just that we waste so much of our time. Waste it chasing things that really aren't going to benefit us in any way at all. We chase after stuff that won't make us happy and that is irrelevant and that just wastes a lot of inner energy that we could be expending doing other things. Well, what other things are there? Well, he concludes his work by saying, pursuing philosophy. Now, you, again, that's kind of a massive understatement. It's just like saying, you know, in order to um, be a good communist, you just have to institute world communism. That's easy. But, you know, he says, pursue philosophy. That's what you should do with your time. Anything else is kind of a waste of time. And pursuing philosophy is uh, almost just the absolute bare beginning of what I think is the answer to your question. What do we do? Um, he just says, in on the shortness of human life, how to avoid wasting your time on things that are irrelevant. <clears throat> um, Epictetus says in the Enchiridion, says uh, the first line, there are things that are under your control and things that aren't under your control. Don't follow things, don't pursue things that you have no influence over. Um, that strikes me as pretty darn good advice, but it's advice that people don't seem to follow. Um, for example, let's say I am a hardline communist, and I believe that humanity's problems will be solved, or if not solved, then at least fixed or made manageable if we have worldwide communism. So, there's my goal. Okay, can I live with the fact that that goal will virtually certainly not be achieved? Um, maybe I can. Maybe just striving towards it is enough for me. Uh, but can I face the fact that humanity may reject this? Um, can I avoid being contaminated by being poisoned by bitterness at the fact that I have sort of the answer to all of our problems, but the world doesn't want communism? Um... You know, it's <clears throat> that's something I think that's beyond one's control. If you take that as your point of departure as to how you're going to relate to the world, um, I would say that that's definitely a good fork in the road to take very carefully. Are, is the path that I'm choosing achievable? Now, it doesn't have to be achievable, of course, but can I live with the fact that I may not achieve my goal. 
Um, because I know lots of people that have goals that they know they'll never achieve, but that doesn't particularly bother them. Um, I know a fair number of people who are self-described anarchists, who are fairly sure, if you actually ask them, what's the chance of this actually happening in the real world? Huh, are you kidding? In this world? No way. Okay, then why are you an anarchist? Well, you know, it's, it's an ideal, isn't it? See, that's the the kind of, you know, belief, I guess, that is sustainable. You know that, okay, you believe in this, you believe in the, that this is a great idea, but it's not going to happen, um, or it's almost certainly not going to happen. Can you live with that, or does this make you angry that, you know, people are going to spit out your prescription? Um, that's an important thing. You have to find out what's actually achievable and what isn't achievable, and if you can actually live with the fact that what you've chosen is achievable, or not achievable, rather. Might be not achievable. Uh, and, you know, the ability to deal with failure, the ability to deal with rejection, or uh, or what strikes you as obduracy, or stupidity, or self-destructiveness in, you know, the world or other people is an important thing. Um... And essentially what that means, what that essentially is, is can you live with the fact that whatever your desires are, even if they're good desires, they're desires that are based on altruism, are not achievable. Um, the world actually refuses to be perfected, but does that mean that we shouldn't attempt to perfect it? Can we live with that? Um, <clears throat> And uh, that's, but again, that's not really advice as to what to do actually to achieve the negative or the <laughs> the positive value state. It's just what not to do. But again, you have to sort of, I guess, take these things incrementally. First, you have to find out which, you know, what are the apparent dead end uh, sort of things for you. Um, I mentioned the desire. The idea is to get rid of desire, and that way we don't actually. Um, we're not tormented or enticed by desire. As you say, we seem to be hardwired to desire certain things. That's all very well to sort of say, I don't want to desire all these things, but these things pull us regardless. Um, and I guess you have to, again, go to Epictetus again, saying there are things you can control and things you can't control. Now he says we can control desire, and yes, I to a certain extent, or maybe to a decisive extent, I agree, but you have to understand when there are certain desires that are stronger than you are. Now, if they're harmless desires, um, the obvious case is the sexual desire. That doesn't seem to be all that dangerous, provided it's managed correctly. You and I are both married. That's a good way to sort of manage things. Um, to keep that desire sort of within the bounds of that which is manageable. Even that, though, I think can get out of hand, but <clears throat> it's a good way to sort of say, okay, I I understand that this one's bigger than me, I can't do anything about it, or maybe I can do something about it, but it's, it's, it's a big, 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 big issue here, and uh, let's just sort of find some way to put it in somewhere, some compartment where it can be managed and, you know, most societies go along the lines of some sort of monogamy for that. That's the best way to sort of put that in a, in a place where it can be managed. And so for any of the other desires that you sort of wish that you control, but you might not be able to, uh, the desire for money seems to be extremely strong in most people. Uh, same thing, live within your means. All of these things, of course, have to be worked at. All of these things have to be uh, practiced, and it can, you know, at the age of 48, it's finally dawning on me that it may take a lifetime to manage, the, to, to master these things. But that doesn't mean that um, we uh, we shouldn't attempt to do it, because, you know, there is the possibility of success here. And again, um, Seneca basically says, well, what else are you going to do with your life? You know, I just go ahead and chase all the other stuff as ends in themselves. And you'll see, all you're doing is wasting your time. <clears throat> so, I guess it's just a, a gigantic 
question or a gigantic question mark that appears when you say um, all you have to do is create uh, self-generate or spontaneously generate positive value state uh, a positive value state um, this is not so easily done but that's where the point of departure is you have to sort of decide is this possible um, to alter one's fundamental value state whether we live in a situation of free will or determinism seems to be beside the point um, the reason why I I say that is I tend to sort of look at it this way um, this is unanswerable and I don't really want to debate anybody for it but I sort of say okay does this person want the universe to be deterministic and does this other person want the universe to involve or to somehow uh, encapsulate free will um, and it looks as though that's the tipping point or at least as far as I can read other people and especially when I look inside here do I want the world to be deterministic or do I want free will to be the way of things um, that seems to be unanswerable and so I have to say look this is this question is beyond my ability to solve um, and I don't want to get bogged down by it um, because ultimately the aim is the positive value state it's not um, it's not finding out in and of itself what the answer to that is because the answer might be to a question that's improperly phrased and I don't understand that yet do does any of us really have a good idea what determinism means and what free will means if we believe either one of them to the exclusion of the other we wouldn't even be arguing <coughs> sorry um, so again you have to sort of say is this a valuable use of one's mental faculties one's mental energy one's limited time on earth that is so precious that we don't want to waste according to Seneca um, you have to sort of say what is it that I want what I want is a positive value state some people would just say they use the term happiness okay um, and some people uh, might phrase that differently if you're a negative utilitarianism you might think that or sorry a negative utilitarianist you might think that happiness is simply the absence of harm or the absence of negative value state because you sort of think okay ne if you take away all the negative value state value states then what's left is the positive well there are no positive but again that's that could be just semantic what you're talking about here um, so you got to be careful and rather than argue about what people are attempting to get at again in the free will determinism thing you end up arguing over details that are ultimately irrelevant so um, what do we do well again I, as I say you manage certain desires um, and you try and sort of I won't say you certainly don't repress them um, but in as much as you can indulge them uh, without them disrupting you without them leading you around I don't see why one should worry about them too much um, you know it's not that difficult I think for you and I to indulge a fair number of desires like the usual physical ones you know food sex all that kind of thing um, but it would be a little bit easier for us to sort of get caught up in them so again you're in some sort of a balancing situation here where you know I can't give up the desire for food for example I I like eating um, but I can try to sort of keep a lid on it to make sure that I don't become a glutton that I don't sort of live simply to eat its question of initiative but how do we actually make our own path and if assuming that path is even a proper word for this um, what do we do 
the devil is in the details indeed in this one. Um, the main thing that I would say is remember that rem try and keep your eyes on that which it is that you're looking for even if it seems so elusive to you, even some way of defining a, your positive value state. Um, I think that perhaps we know what we mean by that, but putting it into words might not be quite so easy. <laughs> Another long-winded ramble, but uh, hopefully that begins to give you my opinion on the subject. Thanks for the response.